Hello, everybody. My name is Brian. And I'm Brian. And this is Brian versus Brian, episode 75. Thanks for joining us. Today, we take a look at The Thing. Which one? <laughs> well, the later one, The Thing. <laughs> the one you don't want us to talk about. <laughs> yeah, 2011. Not to be confused with the other The Thing. Okay, 1982. We don't need to talk about the thing 1982. You know the thing 1982. Yeah, we know the thing. It's been talked about a nauseam. It's a masterpiece. It's great. You, you love know it. it's we amazing. It. Yeah. You should never be watching a video about the thing 1982. You should just be <laughs> watching the thing 1982. Okay. Yeah. And it's nowhere to stream. So good luck, <laughs> bastards. Neither is this one. I had to bust out my old DVD. I was like, I'm sure I own this thing. I had to go through my old DVDs, not even Blu rays. I had to get out, dust it off. There's an old Hastings fucking rental copy where they had, it says rental on the yeah. bottom. <laughs> and they would sell them later on for like seven bucks. <laughs> and I got a lot of good movies that way. I was like, hell yeah. Because, you know, they bought like 50. So everyone could watch it day one. You know, they have that giant facade of all of them. And yeah. then, hey, it ends up not being that popular of a movie. Damn, we really shouldn't have bought 50. <laughs> <laughs> Would sell them. Oh, I meant to look too. It had like the bonus features on it. Typically, the rental copies do not. They're like a special copy DVD. Uh, I don't know if they worked. I'm, I was meant to go back and check them, but I didn't. So I'd be interesting if the bonus features are actually on the rental copy. From, my, from what I remember, they always gave you the bare bones one. It was just like, it would just go straight to the menu, have yeah. like a shitty picture, and you press play, and that was about it. Yeah, they didn't give you shit for rentals. But it was fun watching the previews on this thing because I had a couple. And uh, I just watched them. Me and Jesse was in the room, and it was really cool. It was just a throwback. I miss old previews. Mm. In a time, it was a Scorpion <laughs> King 3 redemption. <laughs> it's like, and it's like got this fake ass with the rock guy. He had to fight for everything he had. <laughs> I in a stand alone. <laughs> yeah. like, in a kingdom, <laughs> sweeping shot of a city, CG fucking Egypt. Two brothers at war, one kingdom divided. I will rise again, and you will be crushed. And then it has like one man stood against him. And then it had an actor. I was like, oh shit, it's Billy Zane. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, God. it was like, uh, I had somebody else who was like, um, oh, yeah, and introducing Kimbo Slice. <laughs> and he was like this big <laughs> Neanderthal bad guy. <laughs> and introducing Dave Bautista. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dave Bautista's in it again. I was like, he's do still doing this type of shit. This is his niche. Anyways, oh, it was so fun. I was like, man, I miss the fucking the voice. <laughs> I don't do that no more. That sounds like a movie we need to review. <laughs> I'm already sold. <laughs> Scorpion King 3. <laughs> Redemption. Like, God, we need it. Like, you didn't have to pay attention back then. It just told you every. You could shut your eyes and enjoy a movie preview back yeah. then, you know? <laughs> <laughs> a story of love. <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> uh, oh, man. That reminds That's me it. of Pablo Francisco. Remember him, the taco boy? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was a good one. That guy can. <laughs> anyway, we got to review Pablo. <laughs> um, yeah. So this came out October tenth, two thousand eleven. Uh, wait a minute. Premiered on October tenth. I guess released on October fifteenth. What does that mean? If it premiered, it released. What are you talking about? I think it premiered 14th. probably in Los Angeles for critics and movie stars, mm. but then <laughs> open to the general audience on October eleventh or whatever. It was. Commercial flop. Well. Damn, uh, I at the time I liked it. A lot of people hated it. I didn't understand the yeah. hate. I mean, if you don't like it, that's one thing. But to hate it, I didn't think it warranted ha hate. Like I thought it was a pretty good companion piece. It's pretty interesting on its own. I mean, sci-fi kind of body horror is pretty cool. Um, they did some things that I think add to the first film, like really, like the lore. Because you don't go much into it, and so this one does for you, and then so the uh, the original movie doesn't have to. Because if you didn't know, this is a prequel, and I guess when it came out, a lot of people thought it was a remake. So I think that was a cool twist that they made it a prequel. I think I 
thought it was a remake too. And then watching it at the end scene, you realize it plays into the first one. I'm like, oh shit, that's yeah. awesome. That was a cool moment. But who is this director? Jesus. He's only done this actually, and one other thing, I think. Red Rain and The Thing. They actually got like a, a Norwegian dude. <laughs> is this a Norwegian crew or what? Yeah, he came That's from like Spadenza. music videos and commercials. This mm. was his first movie. And then apparently he said that this was like one of the worst experiences he's had due to like um, in like studio involvement. And he didn't make movies for like years and years. And then he, I think he finally came out with something in like 2019 or 2020. I was like, damn, huh. homie. But yeah, his first yeah. time director. So I guess the, the production team is Dawn of the Dead remake. Uh, that's a really good one. But uh, it says right on my DVD copy, it's like, from the producers of Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. And anyways, it says here, those producers, Mark Abram and Eric Newman, began to look through Universal Studios' library to find something new to remake. <laughs> upon finding John Carpenter's 1982 film, The Thing, it's like, upon finding... It's like, oh, what? Whoa, look at this. Have you seen this? What is this? Look at this little wacky little straight to DVD gem <laughs> I found here uh, on an old VHS tape. I've never heard of this. <laughs> John Carpenter, who is this? <laughs> Kurt Russell. The two, <laughs> the two convinced Universal to create a prequel instead of a remake, as they felt that remaking Carpenter's film would be like painting a mustache on the Mona Lisa. That's a really good choice. I think these guys are pretty cool for doing that. Because yeah. this could have easily just been a remake. It almost is. Could have easily just been <laughs> In a, a lot of ways, yeah, but it could have easily just been a remake. And then yeah. What would it love it or hate it, it would have been even worse. Because this is a prequel. It's kind of a remake because it it's it's so four shot kind of uh structure with the first one. But I mean shit. Your research team encounters an alien in Antarctica. How many different options you got? It's kind of that's what yeah. <laughs> that's what you're gonna do, Pretty man. Good. You're gonna figure out a test. You're gonna test. <laughs> May the, whether it be blood or teeth, you're gonna figure something out, my friend. <laughs> it's gonna be all right. But uh, it's interesting that it took them this long to make something like this because the movie kind of writes itself, right? Because in the original thing. The U.S. team stumbles upon this Norwegian camp that's just fucking you. There's a whole story there that you never get. Right. And it's just it's yeah. interesting that they never went back to that well and made this movie earlier. Um, it took till 2011 to make it. Uh, but, yeah, it's all right there. I mean, they they you have a based on what they give you in the thing. You have a check mark. Yeah. You know, you need the block of ice. You need the ship. You need the guy who commits suicide. You need, you know, you know, the burnt yeah. camp. Um. So yeah, I think that's and, and that aspect is pretty interesting. Yeah, I think it's a pretty uh first off, I think it's a pretty pretty film. Yeah. Like I, I like this cinematography and all this stuff in it. Um like this first shot where it's got this super wide open shot of the snow cat thing. Mm -hmm. And it's all blurry. Big sweeping or shot, been, yeah. Or could have been my DVD, I don't know. <laughs> it's all <laughs> blurry and then it pulls in, pulls in, pulls in. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, this, I don't know. I've always liked this movie. I mean, I, it's not 82. Come on. No, no, it's no, it's not close. 82, <laughs> but it's fun. I enjoy this movie. I enjoyed watching it again. I watch it from time to time because 82 is harder for me to find. Cause I don't own it. <laughs> I could just pop this one in. I need yeah. to get 82. So then I could do the same with that. But, uh, it's it's really I think it's a good prequel. I think it adds lore to the first one while creating its own. I think they did some really cool things. Uh, I think the uh, creature effects are better than 82. <laughs> Said no one. I was uh, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Time out. <laughs> yeah, that, I guess. So that's the that's the big criticism we'll get into first. All right. That the the creature effects are somehow worse than the practical effects used in 1982s. Uh, I'll give it that. Yeah. Um, the, but the big story is that production, what was the name of the production company? Amalgamated yeah, I don't remember. Systems or something. Something yeah. like some weird Cyberdyne sounding fucking name. I remember. I'm pretty sure it's Amalgamated Designs or something. 
So I'm gonna look they were hired. Right they were hired to do the graphics um, in the vein of 1982. So they hired this, you know, real practical effects company. And then they were just going to use CG to maybe tune it up a tiny bit. Um, and anyways, they I watched some of the footage of like that. The, you know, the guy at the end when he's crawling backwards and he touches yeah. the guy's face. They have that as a uh, animatronic. And then it's got a big green part at the end. Obviously, they're going to green screen out so they can have it crawl and stuff. And it looks pretty good. It looked pretty badass, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so the big thing is there's fucking <laughs> these poor schmucks, dude. There's interviews of them at the premiere, the two guys, talking about how this movie, you know, we are really leaned on practical effects and just great shots in the film at the fucking premiere before That's they watch the movie, they're talking about it. And then they come out of the movie to find out nearly everything they had done was removed and replaced with CG. Everything. It's like no practical shots. I think the only practical shots they got are probably when they're uh, at the body, right? Cutting it, yeah. looking at it, which looks great. That mm-hmm. part looks really good. Um, and, you know, a 2011 CG doesn't hold up that great. It doesn't look terrible. So it's serviceable. I mean, it gets you through the movie. I wasn't so turned off that I can't watch this movie. But, yeah, I mean, it doesn't look amazing. It's, it's pretty bland. You know, it's 2011. So when you do, like, a fleshy human c- character with fleshy skin, it, something about it, it doesn't. Um, it's too rubbery looking, you know, too shiny. Yeah. It's so hard to get like skin tone correct with CG. They're just now figuring it out. Um, so, yeah, I don't yeah, know anything about thoughts. like technology. Obviously, you know, I know nothing about this shit, but I'm wondering if it would have looked better if it was intentionally going to be CGI from the beginning. Because if I'm not wrong, like they actually filmed the movie with practical effects and then, and then after test screenings, um, they just put a layer of a CGI over the existing actual practical effects. And I'm wondering if they're create some sort of weird visual there. Whereas if they just would have filmed the whole thing and just CGI from the ground up, maybe it looked, looked a little smoother or better. Um, I'm just curious to, if that kind of fucked things up a little bit in terms of its visuals, because it does look not dated, but you know, it definitely shows its age a little bit. It looked a little weird. Um, But yeah, I'm just curious to know if that changed anything. Or if it makes it look a little different. Um, what's I gonna say about the CG? <clears throat> yeah, I'm not sure, but it is kind of weird. To f- oh, yeah, they the, you're talking about the test grouping and stuff. They said that it looked like an 80s movie when they f- first cut it together with the practical effects. It's like, uh, duh, <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking set in 1982, yeah. yeah, and it's supposed to lead right into the other one. What do you want this one to be a CG fest? And then we go over here and then it's all fucking it's, <laughs> It's practical. You know, yeah. if you're trying to be a prequel to something, you don't fucking. You're doing a a prequel to Back to the Future. And then and then the prequel, the DeLorean's like a fucking 2021 brand new DeLorean or something. Mm. And then it's a bit. And then in the original, it's the back to the being the 85 DeLorean. It's like, come on. It doesn't does, have yeah, some does continuity with the, the graphics and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I'm so curious to see what it would look like. Uh, I just can't imagine it looking like an 80s movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's filmed in 2011. They got all, they got CG touch ups and stuff. It's like how I just couldn't see it looking worse. I don't know. I wish we could see some of that footage. There is like, you know, obviously anytime a fan is upset, there's going to be a petition, but there is like some sort of bring the, the practical effects cut back kind of like a Snyder <laughs> cut thing. So I'm all yeah. about it. <laughs> give yeah, it, like give they're going to gonna waste that money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's no way. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, a lot of this I like. Like the even the poster or the title I like. The, the person standing there, similar to the 82, but he's got yeah. the tentacles on the hand. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> it's different. Uh, and then uh, the, the reveal of the, the thing. I think it was done really well. I loved it. The helicopter. And they like the, the sick guy. And she's like, oh, no, he's, he, he, we got to stop him. I can't yeah. let him leave. And then it turns out to be the other guy. And you're like, oh, fucking mind fuck. <laughs> face comes up. His face comes apart. That effect looked decent. 
Um, I thought that one looked decent compared to like the giant CG melty guy at the end. I thought that was the worst one. Yeah, at least the designs um, are cool. Like, even though the yeah. CG isn't strong, the designs of the monsters are really cool. Like, there's one where uh, the scientist woman, um, so she's like running down the hallway, but her head's tilt back, and she's like, <laughs> ah! <laughs> it's kind of crazy looking. <laughs> it's like constantly like screaming, mm -hmm. <laughs> like the aliens. What I don't, so let's go through it a bit. The American comes uh, to check out this Norwegian site. Uh, they find a ship. They find a specimen. First of all, this Nor Norwegian guy, leader, I don't like him off the bat. No one does. He's a yeah. little shady. <laughs> he's everything. He's he's like the guy from Alien 2. He's all about the fucking bringing it home and having it fucking mate with other things. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's almost comical because uh, the moment you're introduced, you just know who he is. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, it's this guy. I don't like this, this archetype. Guy. Yeah, it's like I want to get a sample. She's like, I don't think that's a good idea. Why? Uh, it's not sterile. We don't have any tools. Uh, there's a thousand reasons why. <laughs> <laughs> no. What well, size drills do you have? I got I got a three eighths inch. Fucking grab it! <laughs> Come you on, run the clock you here. Just start, start grinding into the ice towards an alien body with all sorts of germs. They're in a shack. They're all gathered around too. It's all watching. And uh, it's that one guy. I liked his character. The guy who's actually doing the drilling. He was like the kind of wimpy blonde uh, scientist guy, you know? Mm, yeah, yeah. The one who gets his face touched at the end. But uh, yeah, he's drilling. And I love it when he, he gets and then it's like, <gasps> and it goes down <laughs> into the body and he like drops. Oh, Ooh. <laughs> and he kind of looks around and everybody's like, Ooh, dude, what the fuck, man? <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Sorry, I've never drilled into an alien body before. I didn't know how hard to go. <laughs> I thought that was a funny scene. <laughs> like, oops. <laughs> oh, oopsie. So they get the fucking sample. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and that's when they... Is that when they... No, she doesn't check out the sample then. She checks it out later, right? When they get some blood from some someone, one of the creatures or something. And that's when she sees the cells kind of... Doing the, doing the oh thing. yeah it was the um, one of the oh the guy from the plane the one that you just talked about that's that mm. and they he te she tests his dna to figure out that or wait no it had to been before that never mind who the fuck did she she oh she tested the, the guy that got fucking they got uh snapped the uh, so the the alien leaves the block of ice and then it's kind of like hanging mm -hmm. out underneath one of the shacks and then it pulls one oh, yeah guy yeah when it pulls the dude in so she samples that guy and then figures out that the that alien guy's a fucking idiot though yeah <laughs> and the, the, the aliens under there and it's got a fucking mouth like a pussy looking mouth full of razor sharp teeth hello <laughs> hey <laughs> i found a flashlight it. hey it's over here <laughs> i think it's nice <laughs> it grabs him oh shit and then uh <clears throat> Going through, and it busts out of the, the ice. I love that part. The guy comes back. It's gone. Oh, shut the fuck up, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. And he doesn't, he's, he doesn't portray how scary it is or weird it is. You know, he just comes in. Hey, that thing broke out. He's kind of like, dude, I would, you'd be going in there like, hey, <laughs> like yeah. yelling at the top of your lungs. That fucking thing jumped out of that. And they go and check it out. Oh, God damn it. He told the truth. Look at this. <laughs> All right, everybody, grab a jacket. Let's go look for this goddamn thing. Yep. <laughs> and then I, I like that's what they say. It's like, okay, let's go look for this thing. <laughs> Get it? It is the thing. We're gonna go look for it. Uh, the fucking worst decision ever. Go look for it. I was like, dude, you have no idea what it is. I mean, what? You don't even have a. You don't have a trap. Yeah. Like, what are you gonna do? You gonna put a leash on it? It's like, come back here, guy. Come on. You're the human. Like, yeah, now. let it be. You know, let's go <laughs> shoot pool and drink. It's and fine. I, I like, I like what he said. Okay, we're gonna go find it. But when you find it, don't do anything. <laughs> Report back. <laughs> what? <laughs> I found it. It's uh, it's hanging out over here. <laughs> Good job. Okay, back to the break room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As as long as it's not doing anything to anybody, let's just leave it. <laughs> well, okay. It goes wrong pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, what I don't ever get about this is like, what is the fucking 
thing's normal form? Why is it always trying to be something else? It's like Tofurky. It's like, just be yourself, Tofu. <laughs> okay? It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Always trying to be something else. But then it has this big, which we get to see quite a bit of the ship at the end. This big, complicated ship, dude. It's got thrusters and little fins that turn up. And Anyways, how the fuck is it flying this thing? Is it flying this thing as a little... <laughs> <laughs> tentacle creature. It's got tentacles doing shit. <laughs> yeah. It's got like a thousand controls and just all the <laughs> flying out to each little lever. It's got levers in fucking four rooms over, but it's like <laughs> a giant tentacle going down the hallway. It's like, dude, if you have a ship like this that's that advanced, you probably have a humanoid type of form and you're flying it. Either that or you're on the other spectrum where you like have no form and just kind of a blob and you're controlling everything with your mind which obviously this isn't yeah. so i never got that it's like dude how is this thing flying that ship but they don't they don't mix that crazy creature comes, <laughs> comes oh my ship <laughs> puts his hand uh, on the door opens yeah. oh my ship <laughs> this never made sense to me well, he's that clearly not alien, a good driver <laughs> this alien has this ship you know what i mean yeah like this alien deserves a ship that's just like a, a rock. That's the type of alien that comes to Earth on like a rock. It does. You can't even fly it. It's just a, it has a trajectory and it just goes kind of like the I don't know, like the Superman pod. He wasn't flying it. He's just fucking along for the ride. This alien ain't making smart decisions. And no. shit. <laughs> oh, it's man. funny because you can see it in the so in the original opening of the eighty two thing that actually starts with a saucer and it's like. It's like wobbling in a space and then it like wobbles into the atmosphere and he's oh make, shit oh! <laughs> cut to that alien <laughs> oh god damn it <laughs> he's fucking going nuts son of a bitch uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh god oh god yeah Lars get up here <laughs> uh, oh, Jesus and it's just one. It's a fucking giant ship. <laughs> this thing's fucking huge, dude. It's like yeah. apparently there was more in the an original cut. They fucking they cut it out of the movie. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I get, they do say that only one survived. But yeah, you see all of them on the fucking ship. They're just talking to each other. I'm doing good. How are you? <laughs> and then it's funny because they're like totally visceral and fucking monsters. When they, when, you know, they're like popping out of bodies and they're just, they don't, just, and they got tentacles. But when they're fully in a form, they're like super smart. Yeah. And they're like cal- calculating and like mischievous. Like the first time <clears throat> I loved the reveal. And the lady's like, you said somebody cleaned up the bathroom. I think I saw him with a towel or something. I don't know. You think he was cleaning it up? I think he could have been. I don't know. <laughs> And then they go in the room. It was like, we have to stop them from leaving. Where are the keys? I know where the keys are for the, the vehicles. <laughs> and so they, they're over here. Come with me. In that drawer there, the second drawer down, please. Yes. <laughs> and how many keys am I looking for? Five. And then she's turned around. And you hear just. <laughs> and she's like, it, it hits her. Oh, shit. <laughs> I got got. She, she's behind me, isn't she? <laughs> 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 Yeah. Head flips back and it's like like they're so calculating and like you could they, they could obviously fly that ship as a human. They're like, oh yes, press that lever over there. We need a uh, 10 pounds of thrust. Yeah. And then as soon as they're their alien type form, they're just like <laughs> <laughs> I just love it. It's uh. like, what the fuck? So crazy. I want to see like they should have done it, like it turns into an alien. We come to your planet looking for fuel sources. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the aliens actually smart. Anyways, uh, I love it. There's a there's, there's some good effects. Like like you said, maybe not the best looking, but some interesting stuff like faces opening and tentacles coming out. Yeah, chests opening and it's a fucking vagina mouth with fucking razor sharp bits and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Uh, introducing the part where mm-hmm. they can't replicate. Uh, foreign material. That was pretty cool. I really liked that story beat. And they open that up and uh, they find like the, the pin from his arm. And, oh yeah, he broke his arm. He had to go to Argentina to get it set. Yeah. Why is it outside of him? And you know, they got him right there. 
uh, it's interesting, the teeth part, you know. <laughs> Show me your goddamn feelings. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody will. Oh, now I'm going to get in trouble because I floss. Yeah. Come yeah. on, man. Come oh. on, man. And we're all thinking that, like, just, okay, so, so if someone doesn't have cavities, they're fucked. Um, yeah, but I, I totally agree. She's like, no, it's just a way we can get closer. At yeah, least we'll yeah. know, you know, at least some of us who aren't, since so we got less people to deal with. I was like, yeah, I agree. I deal with that. It's actually kind of happy it went that way because as soon as it was like, we're going to do a blood test, I'm like, get the fuck out of here. We're going to do the fucking Petri dish and the thing. Just like, that makes no sense. I was like, I was so getting upset about it. And then when it, it kind of got in sabotaged and then like with the show me the teeth, like, okay, at least it's a different <laughs> yeah. enough to where like, you know. I don't remember the logic behind the first test in the first one. It's like, oh, if we st- stick your, uh, a hot rod in your blood, it's going to jump. Yeah, like <laughs> okay, something to do with fire yeah, or heat. <laughs> Oh yeah, it hates fire. It hates it. Oh, <laughs> hates it. <laughs> uh, it's like you're just talking to the to the blood like fire. It's like, <laughs> it makes that a little visible <laughs> noise. Anyways, <clears throat> so that was cool, and it was kind of cool that uh, so most of these characters speak like Norwegian and stuff, so it's subtitled. Uh, and they put the English characters to not have everyone be subtitled. A subtitle the whole fucking movie would have been pretty cool. Yeah. Man. Make it all the the team. I really liked Lars. Lars is an awesome character, and he like uh, he doesn't speak English, so mm-hmm. he's just really cool, just visceral grunts and like <laughs> showing her the grenades. Granata. Yeah. <laughs> you, you need the one character who doesn't speak English to show up at the in the credits to to meet with the U.S. team. Otherwise, that wouldn't make sense. But yeah, I like Lars a lot. He was cool. I, it's funny because I thought for some it's been a while since so I've seen the 82 version, but I thought the guy that uh, gets out of the helicopter in the 82 version was a redhead with a red beard. So I was thinking the whole movie that that was going to be that he was going to survive, that redhead guy from Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah, yeah. But then, then he dies. <laughs> oh, shit. Maybe he wasn't a redhead. Yeah, that guy was pretty sad. His death. Like, I think he just kept pumping shit into his mouth. Yeah, his like, eyes and, like, turning red. Back. It's like it's like it's all coming out of his face. Yeah. <laughs> like, dude, quit pumping him. He's good. <laughs> He's full. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah. The the end. I didn't get it. Like the bad guy. All of a sudden, I lost track. And then the bad guy is like in the snow cat. He's going. Oh, don't worry. He has nowhere to go. Oh, he has somewhere to go. He's going to the ship. Like that main bad guy? Mm-hmm. It's like, where did he go? I was like, oh, yeah. I forgot about him. He just fucking disappeared. Nobody <clears> thought <throat> much about it. And then um, they defeat him. And then we come to find out the other guy's a fucking alien, too. It's like, oh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> that was pretty cool, though. Uh, because I think, to my knowledge, he even helped when he was an alien. Right? As a cover, no, he, he, no, you don't think he was an alien at that point? No, because they, they do a thing where they're in the snow cat on the way to the ship, and she looks to see if in his earrings in frame, and she's like, okay, so she, she felt comfortable oh. going into the ship. And then when they get separated on the ship, you know, and then they converge at the end and they get back, that's when she notices that the ring was gone. And well, she he helped them get off the ship, didn't he? He was with her in an alien at that point. I guess in that point, yeah. I guess that he did help. But I guess he's really out. just trying to get back to more humans to infect him. Yeah. But he could have done the same plan as his friend. Oh, no. I guess that the, the, the engines were fucked by the... Because it blew up. So he couldn't use the ship. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, your earring. Huh? And he grabs his ear. It was the other ear, asshole. <laughs> 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 Like, well, hold on. You j- this is the snow cat you need to get back. <laughs> Just burnt the fuck out of it. Yeah. Right? I wish she. I wish she would have said "wrong ear, asshole." I want to. I want to kick ass '80s <laughs> line again. <laughs> Wrong ear, asshole. <laughs> uh, that would have been perfect. Yeah, Wolverines. <laughs> yeah. Well, it would have imitated Kurt Russell's line in the end of the thing, where yeah, fuck you too, and he, <laughs> he throws the the thing. But um, what the fuck happens to her? I don't remember. She just sits in the cap, and then it, that's basically in the movie. So we don't even get to know like what happened to her. But we we go back to Lars. 
It's like, how the <laughs> fuck did Lars survive? Yeah. He got grabbed by something or something. I don't know. What the fuck happened? Yeah, it was the, the U.S. duo, the, the black guy and the beard, the earring guy. They, I guess, kidnapped and put him in a room, maybe? A closet? And then you don't, we don't really know. We just know that they kept him alive. They put him somewhere and kept him alive, and then he comes back <clears> at the end. But it feels like that was the alien getting him because you don't see them when they you see Lars in a doorway and then he gets kind of pulled over to the side. Yeah. I thought it was the alien getting, but I guess not. You know, and he did, they do say later, we didn't kill him. Well, yeah, what'd yeah. you do? <laughs> well, that's, you'll find out later. You'll find out in the sequel, won't you? <clears throat> but yeah, I love the ending. I love it, dude. And it's like, I didn't know. I, I, I was like, fuck, this is a pretty good remake, I guess. I Hits the kind of beats. It's kind of cool. And then all of a sudden, the helicopter comes. And it's really cool. I love it when they do this. <clears throat> this is the way to do a mid credit scene, I think. Not make you sit through five minutes of credits and then play it and then five minutes of credits again. Yeah. Like, it's playing throughout the every, like, four seconds. Is a, and then it'll show a couple names. Yeah. <clears throat> I thought that was really cool and like I don't know built tension and it kept you engaged like you weren't like fuck just get through the names yeah and then it's like showing the helicopter and it's Lars and then the fucking dog comes yeah. just fucking galloping out <laughs> <laughs> oh a dog that's no dog get this fucking chopper up <laughs> he's like Jesus <laughs> <laughs> like, yay, man! That's just a dog. Uh, fuck you! A <laughs> dog bit me earlier. And then, yeah, I just thought it was awesome. It's like, oh shit! The beginning of the other one has that fucking dog running into the base. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really loved that ending. And it was a twist for me. I do remember. Uh, I didn't know this was a prequel before watching it. I thought it was a remake. Yeah, I mean it's. Yeah, I think this is the only prequel I can think of that has that shares the same name with this. Usually, it's like the thing colon begins, or like there's always yeah. some sort of sub name with a prequel. But this, so I, I totally agree that it can be. I mean, I even I've seen the movie. And I even said it was a sequel the other, or yesterday when we were talking on we were texting each other. Um, yeah, I think I remember knowing it was a prequel. I saw it. I didn't see it upon <clears throat> release. I think I waited till it was on Blu-ray. So I imagine it was somewhere in 2012. If it came out in 2011, October 2011. Um, yeah, I remember not hating it back then, but I remember not being a big fan. Like, hate's kind of a str- Like, I hate Tom and Jerry, and I hate Space Jam. Like, I never <laughs> want to watch any of those movies ever again. I hate them. <clears throat> but something like this, I um, I don't think it's perfect, but I think it's entertaining enough for a watch. And I think it's entertaining enough for fans of the original to go back and watch. Um, yeah. And it's interesting to see kind of how they handled uh, the Norwegian stuff. And I think it's a cool, even though it's not a perfect movie, it's it's a, at the very least a cool companion piece to the thing, like a double feature. Um, so like maybe on a Friday night you watch this, and then like Saturday night you watch and I think it kind of helps as one big piece, one large story. Um, and yeah, I guess rewatching it, I haven't seen it since 2012, so it's been 10 years since I've watched it. Um, I don't... I think I've warmed up to it now than I did back then. Um, I think I enjoyed myself quite a bit when I watched it yesterday. Um, I think the things it does <clears throat> wrong or gets wrong is I feel like there could have been more tension. I think that's what the, the original gets right is like the tension of not knowing who's who and like them going at each other. Um, the, we do get a little bit of that in this movie, but and I think when it does go there, I think it's a makes for pretty entertaining set pieces and 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 movie moments but i don't think it stays there long enough i think i would have liked yeah. more paranoia and who is who and that kind of stuff um but other than that yeah i i don't understand the hate again hate's a strong word i don't hate this movie and um i think it's strong enough to warrant a watch i don't think it's bad but i you know it has issues but i don't think it's bad either i think it's worth a watch in my opinion <clears throat> i think it's more than worth the watch like you know a lot of movies we watch we're kind of, I'm just sitting there to get through it. You know what I mean? But yeah. I was entertained the whole time. I'm sitting there watching the thing. Mm-hmm. I was like, I, you know, I had to get up and do something. I pause it. It's like, oh shit, pause. Like, yeah. yeah, I did the <laughs> same thing. A, yeah. Get a snack, come back. Some movies I won't pause it because <laughs> I can just, I can hear it in the kitchen. <clears throat> but yeah, I was like, 
engaged the whole time. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is pretty good. And then even Jesse was trying to clean and she would, she kept sitting down on the couch and watching bits and she was just like, dude, oh, I have to clean that stupid movies pulling me in. <laughs> I was like, so yeah, it is pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, I like it. It's, it's a good movie. I mean, it doesn't have to be as good as 82 to be a good movie. You know what I mean? No, no. <clears throat> so that's my thoughts. I still enjoy it. Um, so I don't know. The score is a tricky thing though. Yeah. Tricky, tricky. It's tricky to rock a rhyme, to rock a rhyme that's right on time. It's tricky. Um, I'm happy giving this a fuck, 7.9. It's almost an 8 for me. I really enjoy it. I think it's good. Nice. Uh, I'm letting it a 7.1. I'm just giving that little bit of that point one in there. I feel like I always go on the, the 7s and the 8s and 9s. I want to give a little bit more point one love to this movie. Um, just because, I don't know, it was, I was surprised at how, like you said, it's, it's pretty entertaining. It's, again, it's not perfect. It has, it has issues. But despite its issues, from beginning to end, I can't say that I was... Well, I would say the spaceship part, I was kind of starting to yeah. tune out a little bit. It kind of becomes a little bit of a monster movie, CG fucking bore fest a little bit towards the end. But other than that, like... It's pretty entertaining, and I think it improves the original, not improves it, it's already a fucking amazing movie, but it makes for a, a pleasurable experience going right back into the 82, knowing all the backstory. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I think it's pretty solid. <clears throat> yeah. I Underrated. Don't. Underrated uh, sequel prequel thing. <laughs> yeah, totally. I don't get why this is hated so much. Like, go watch it, it's pretty good. Just because something is not as good as the original doesn't mean it sucks. Like, come on now. Okay, please. Please. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's it. We enjoyed it. Check it out, man. If you've never seen it because you thought it was just a stupid remake or something, dude, give it a chance. I think you'll, you'll find some enjoyment in it. Uh, I think it does enhance the first one. It adds a little bit of lore and it makes you, when you watch the first one, enjoy it even more somehow you know um but yeah uh please like and subscribe please check us out on uh youtube spotify apple music um as always uh we love doing these reviews just sit down and shoot the shit about a subject for a little bit mm -hmm. um i think now we finally scream is coming out right is that what we got next yes scream is next weekend okay well Go check that out, baby. Yeah, Scream I'll, nine. <laughs> I'll have to check in with you. I I don't know what's gonna happen, but I know that just on a I don't know, you uh, I, I don't know. I just feel like hospitals are getting kind of crazy, but I don't know what's gonna happen in Portland, then we may do another shutdown. I just I don't mm. know what's gonna happen this way. I just, I'm feeling some sort of theaters are gonna shut down again. Um, but I'll keep you posted. If not, then I'll try and run out and see it before <laughs> before the mm. city shuts down again. But get in, yeah, I do get in a bubble. I, I do see uh, things rising. So I mean, usually when things rise, they start to kind of close restaurants and bars and theaters. Cricket Portland. <laughs> so we'll see. <clears throat> I will keep you posted. Yeah. Yeah. What was it called? Uh, the movies in, in, uh, Oh, stab scream. Stab. Yeah. Stab. Nine. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, join us. Thanks for watching The Thing 2011. Until the next Vs, we say peace. <laughs> See you then. Uh, nice. <laughs> <laughs>